In this video, we're going to show you how you can model a round shape in Aspire. So starting off with a set of vectors that we've already pre-drew in the software, and we're going to use these to demonstrate the round shape tool. So in order for us to activate the round shape tool, we need to come over to the modeling tab. So we're going to click on this one here, create rounded shape components. And when we click on that, that just means we're in the create round shape mode. So now when I select a vector, I'm able to actually create a shape from that vector. So we're just going to twiddle our view and take a look at our part down this angle here. So when we click on a vector to begin with, we're initially met with an angle handle and a base height handle. So a base height handle will just give you a flat shape or a base for your shape. And the angle handle will allow you to define a wall angle in order for us to create our round profile within our circle vector. Okay, and so in order for us to start creating a shape, you just want to click on the angle handle and you're going to click on that with your left mouse button and you're just going to drag up and it's going to create a rounded dome shape in this case because we've got a circle. Okay, so you can see this rounded shape here. You can see next to our angle handle, it's currently at 90 degrees, so this is where it maxes out. If you wanted to, do, to decrease that, you could simply just pull that handle down and you can see that we displayed the angle there on the right hand side in that field here. Um, talking of that field, it just enables us to put in precise values as well if you wanted to. For example, we could go 60 degrees in there and you can take a look at the part that you've got here. Now, if I wanted a negative shape, I could simply pull my handle down and you can see we can go into the minus values like so. And again, we go all the way up to minus 90. In this case, we'll just go with a nice positive shape here. We can just put that up like so. And the really nice thing about this is we're just getting constant feedback and we're really seeing dynamically how our shape is forming. So this is your base height handle. So if you click on that, you can add in a base height, which is your vertical height that we put underneath your model, like so. And again, if you want to reduce that, you can just use a slider. If you didn't want a base height in there anymore, simply type in zero and you can see it updates there. Now, the moment that you start creating a shape, it has no uh, relevance to the vector it's created from anymore. So you can see we can move it around our job like so. And we still have access to the, all the different tools in order for us to further edit this shape. So again, I can continue to adjust the angle if I wanted to. Now, if I wanted to name this component, I can come over here and I can give that a name. And then I could go ahead, press apply. And if I'm ready to come out of the tool, I can go ahead and press close. And so now with that shape created, I can access that from my level drop down here. I can see it there. I can switch the visibility off for that component. Likewise, I can come over to my components tab and take a look at that in our component tree also. And then when I click on our component, I then have access to some of the basic handles. So where I can adjust the base height, I could look at adjusting the scale of that or adjusting the total height of our component. Now, if I haven't altered or manipulated the contour of our shape, for example, if I stretch this out and kind of transform that shape, then I still have access to all of the other options that we had available to us in the original Create Shape tool. And I can go back into there by pressing E on the keyboard. And again, you'll see now that I'm displayed the angle. And again, I can make further edits to that if I wanted to. Now, if I wanted to create a round shape from another vector, whilst in this mode, I can simply select a vector. You'll see now that we've presented with component one, so I know that we're creating a new shape. And then again, I can start the whole process again by looking at applying an angle, where I'm then able to access many other options that we'll take a look at now. So let's just pull our angle handle all the way up to 90. So now we're going to look at this handle over here. So this is our limit handle. So the limit option will kind of cut off your shape at a limit that you set here. So currently it's at 100% of the shape. 
And if we bring that down, you can see that as we move that down, we're presented with a flat shape, but with a rounded edge. And this is where we're just essentially flattening this off. And you can use your slider uh, until you get a shape that you desire. Okay, so that's pretty much that. If you didn't want to flatten that off, you can just set that back up to 100 again, just to kind of reset that. Okay, so then we've got the scale factor here. So we could increase the scale of that like so. And you can see that there. You can pre we're presented with the, uh, the actual height there. And then over in the form, we've got a percentage at which that is scaled at. If we wanted to revert that back to 100, we can simply put in 100 over there. This handle here, this represents the total height. So it's currently telling us that this shape that we've created is currently sitting at 1.65 inches tall. This is all based on the angle and the scale that we've set our shape. Now, if we introduced a base height, for example, let's just put that up like so. So we've added in a base height. You can see that we've got a base height here of 0 0.4662. We can see that there also. Scale is set at 100% and now our total is at 2.1162. And so if we, and so what it's done is it's included that base height as a, a whole total value. And if we go to our total height handle over here, and then if we start reducing this down, if we just let go, what it does is it brings that down proportionally. And so your scale is now at 67.85%, your base height is less as well. Okay, so there's lots of options to really have control over all of the different heights and the angles that you've got available here. A little top tip here, if you wanted to reset your base height to zero, just double click on the handle and it'll take that back to zero there. Another thing to note is that if you press N on the keyboard whilst in this mode, you can access the kind of node edit mode to really adjust the boundary or the contour of your shape. For example, I could take this handle here and I could move that in and you'll see that the shape adjusts accordingly. And while still in this mode, when I select, when I come out of node edit mode by right clicking and then clicking back onto my component here, I still have access to the angles and I can adjust that like so. I could look at then using the limit if I wanted to, to really, again, I have further control of my shape whilst altering the outer boundary of it or whilst in this mode. Now, if we just close out the form and if we take a shape we've already created and if we go into node edit mode on this shape by pressing N on the keyboard, we can make edits to the actual shape itself like we did before earlier. And again, if we go back into the create shape form uh, by pressing E on the keyboard, we'll be able to go back in and further edit the angle and all of the other options that we had available to us before. And the only time you can't do that is if you actually adjusted or transformed the shape using the transform handles. So for example, if I select that, press E, you'll see that we're just presented with the component properties form. I can no longer adjust the angle, the limit, all of those options, I only have access to the basic tools. So it's worth noting that if you do make changes to your shape using the transform handles, you won't be able to access some of those useful handles that you had before. Okay then, so let's just close out here and we're just gonna press Control Z just to undo that. So let's go back into our design tab. We're gonna go back into the Create Rounded Shape tool. So this time we're going to look at this star shape. Okay, so let's just put that uh, down this angle here and we'll just apply an uh, angle profile like so. Okay, so something like that doesn't look too bad. However, it's worth noting that with shapes that have corners, we do have this handy option to preserve the internal corners. And if you check that, uh, you'll see you get a much better shape. So there's lots of options to enable you to really control what we've got here. So you can see that looks really nice there. So now let's have a look at an example where we create a shape between two closed vectors. So, so far we've looked at just a single closed vector in order for us to create our shape. So all you do is you select two vectors like so, and again, you can use your slider to create your shape. So here you can see we're creating this kind of donut shape here. 
and that's how you create a shape between the two vectors and it assigns that angle between them along with all of the other parameters that you may have selected in there as well. Okay then, so now we're going to look at the last option here, which is our properties handle. So we're just going to twiddle our view ever so slightly. We're just going to look at that from the front view here. We're just going to go over to our properties tool. So here we've got options to adjust how we combine our components with other components. Then we've got two options here to fade and tilt your components. So fade will reduce uh, the component down by a percentage in the direction that you set that and then tilt will essentially apply a tilted or angled base height to your component in order to create this tilt so let's have a look at how we do that so we're going to start with the fade so you're going to click on the fade option and then we're going to use the set option here and this is going to enable us to set our anchor point okay so at this stage we probably want to go and look at this top down okay so here we're going to click on the left hand side so this is where I want to start my fade and you'll see now we've got this line that's pulled out and it's kind of anchored from the first point so that's our first point that we clicked there and we want to fade this down from the left to the right so I'm going to click to create my second point like so and then if we just adjust our view control so we're looking at that at the front you can see it's fading down here if we just select that so we can see what's going on there and you'll see that it's set that 50 percent so as it fades over to the right hand side it's now faded that 50 percent the original height and you can increase that if you wanted to you can use a slider like so we could decrease that so there's lots of control there okay so we're just going to just kind of Put that at zero and we're just going to uncheck the fade option there so we've got no fade at all and now we're going to look at the result of a tilt so we're going to use the tilt option set so exactly the same as before from the left to the right and then again let's just take a look at this from the front view and this time we actually set this tilt using an angle okay and you can see it just creates an angled base height in there like so and tilts and fades are brilliant um, for creating the look that one component is in front or behind of another component. Uh, so that's where it's mostly used uh, or for creating interesting shapes that you might need. So that really completes this overview of how to create rounded shapes in Aspire. Now you've seen how we've dynamically adjusted all of the, the shapes that we've created from within the 3D view using those handles. Of course, you can go into the form to set parameters and options in there if you wanted to. Now to see this tool in action, I recommend that you take a look at how to uh, model and sculpt the Lioness tutorial, which we'll link into the related videos section of this video. Thank you for watching.